Uh, hi everyone. Uh, so, welcome to this uh, lecture number 2 of week 10 on the course on uh, linear systems theory. Uh, so, just to have a little uh, recap of what happened uh, in, the, in the last lecture. Uh, uh, so, we were uh, looking at uh, simultaneous controller and, and observer design and we first derived what were the necessary and sufficient conditions for state observation and then we proceeded on to, to, the, to the design procedure of how to actually construct the, the state observer and it turned out that we were looking at situations where we had to design an L such that this uh, A minus L C is a stability matrix where okay, then you have uh, the state space model for the closed loop system taking, uh, taking this, uh, this particular form and here you have uh, the, the controller design uh, uh, part, here you have the observer design part and what you also, what we also saw at the end was that the design of the controller and observer do not actually interfere with each other and this is how the, how the closed loop uh, in terms of a, of a transfer function uh, looks like, right. So, uh, in summary, uh, if I were to just draw a, a, a block diagram representation of it, uh, it would just look, uh, look something like this, right. So, so here I have uh, my state x dot as a x plus uh, b u, y is some c times x. Uh, I want u of the form minus k x, right. So, this is the u. I do not have k for measurement. So, I will have the estimated state as u equal to k x hat and this x hat comes as a result of the, uh, uh, of the, of the observer design, right. So, so where uh, the, the observer part uh, looked uh, something, something like this. Yeah, so, so this this plus this uh, gave us the uh, the observer design. So, like x cap dot is a x cap plus b u, and if you just plug in all this, uh, you get a block diagram representation which which looks um, something like this, right? Okay. So uh, we today we begin by uh, looking at some small uh, very uh, small design problems. Uh, I also use the help of MATLAB a little later, but let us uh, first uh, do a very, very uh, basic design uh, procedure by hand. Okay, let us say I have, uh, okay, let me change the color. <coughs> okay, so let us start with the system x dot is A x plus B u, y is C times x, where A is 0, 1, 20.6 and 0, uh, B is uh, 0, 1 and C is 1 and 0, okay. Okay, this example I just uh, directly take from Ogata. So, just in case there is some confusion, you can always go back to, to Ogata and refer. Okay, so what are the uh, design specifications? So, the des design uh, specifications are such that uh, we want the closed loop poles uh, to be at uh, minus 1.8 plus minus j 2.4, okay. So, assuming that x is available for measurement. I will use the standard pole placement techniques to find a value of k such that a minus b k has its eigenvalues at minus 1.8 plus minus j 2.4, okay. I will not go into the details of, of that steps, uh, but the, it turns out that the k here would be 29.6 and then 3.6. Okay. So, so you can just use any of those formulas that we had last time starting from just matching the two characteristic equations or uh, e, the Ackermann's formula or through the controllable canonical form and so on. Okay. So, that is uh, that's not uh, important, right. So, but what happens here is that x is not directly available for measurement. So, an additional step we need to do is that of an uh, observer design. Okay, so in in most uh, in most problems, uh, we will only be given 
what is the desired plant performance? So this this uh, could be in terms of uh, could be in, in in terms of of a, of a certain overshoot, a settling time, and so on. And what we remember from from basic control course is that uh, this will uh, translate to some kind of uh, locations of the poles of the closed loop system, or what we call over there as the as the dominant uh, pole analysis. Okay, so how do we go about doing the observer design? Okay, let's say there, there is a specification such that the observer poles. Are, well, are desired to be at minus 8 and minus 8, okay, like we design a observer of, 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 of second order here, okay, because uh, we have to observe the uh, two states. Okay, so, uh, I can si similarly use uh, the, the techniques I had, so what, what uh, the observer design problem translates to is to find the locations or assign minus 8, minus 8 in this example to a, uh, to this matrix A minus L C, right. So, this is or, or, or over here. So, A minus B K, we had poles at uh, minus 1.8 plus minus J 2.4 and A minus L C should have poles at, at say minus 8, okay. So, I just do the, do the uh, exact uh, same same procedure, I can use uh, a bunch of methods as stated earlier to compute what is the k or l in the in this case, what is l such that eigenvalues of a minus l c are at exactly minus 8 and minus 8. I can again compare the characteristic equations uh, of, of what is uh, the desired and what are the unknowns in terms of L. So, it turns out that L uh, will be something like this. Okay. Uh, so, so this is, is a little design procedure to show to tell how uh, I place the controller poles and how I place the observer poles. Uh, and what we also know is that these two do not interfere with each other, right. So, even if I uh, place this at minus 16, minus 16 nothing here would change and and and, and vice versa, okay. So, so now uh, just to plot how, how the closed loop uh, response looks like, I can just compute the, the transfer function, right. So, which we had derived uh, over here uh, last time, right. Uh, and, and I can do a, a bunch of things to, to, to check the step response uh, and so on. Okay, so what is important here is to is the location of observer poles, right? So one question that we will answer shortly is how to uh, place, how or actually where to place the observer poles. Okay, and if you if you look at look at the the, the closed loop system, uh, what we want is that the state x hat is the estimated state. Uh, so, there is there is two process, right. So, one is u should be computed as k x hat, okay, and this x hat is computed as a result of an observer design. So, first, so, so the observer should give its, its, uh, its, its x hat, the estimated state to the controller and, and so on, right. So, uh, first is okay, which dynamics should be, should be faster, right. So, we will first just check numerically, right, just, just try to play around uh, a bit with the poles of the observer and check uh, how do I appropriately choose the poles of the of the observer. Okay, so, I will do a, a, a little uh, uh, example here. Uh, okay, so, uh, I, I just directly jump into uh, the uh, system here which has uh, A matrix now, uh, which looks like this, uh, a certain B and a certain D. I will I'll, I'll post this code online so that you could check uh, it for, for yourself. Uh, so, what is desired is that uh, the uh, closed loop poles are at minus 2 and 1 plus j and 1 minus j, right. So, uh, two complex conjugate poles and one pole on the on the real axis. And let me say, well, I, I want my desired observer poles to be at these three locations, minus 8, minus 8, minus 8, right. So, so these three things. Okay. Now, Okay, so MATLAB gives you a bunch of tools to 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 uh, do the pole placement. So I'll just use the the command for Ackermann's uh, formula. So I have uh, A, which is my system matrix defined by uh, this thing over here. Uh, so I have B, which is the input matrix. 
I know what are the desired poles. So once you just give this uh, these three inputs to this this command here, it will it will plot it will show you what are the what is the controller gain. Similarly for the observer gain. So I have A, I plug it in here. I have C, and then I have also the location of the observer poles minus eight minus eight minus eight, and I do uh, I and I do the design simultaneously, and at the end I just I just plot how my closed loop step response, for example, looks like. So let's just uh, run this code. Okay. So what I see here is uh, well, I have a, a nice looking response, even though the overshoot is say about. 50% uh, in this case, uh, the settling time about uh, five, 5 seconds and so on. Okay, so let me do something else. So let me say I place the poles at minus 2, minus 2 and minus 2. Okay, and I, and, and I run the code again. So okay, so let us compare these two. Uh, Okay, so this was uh, the figure one was where I had the observer poles at minus eight, minus eight, minus eight. Uh, so this had an, an overshoot about fifty percent. Uh, this this response looks looks horrible, right? So you have uh, an overshoot which exceeds hundred percent. The settling time is much larger than what it was here. And you, if you see, if you maybe place it at at minus one, minus one, it will get uh, much much worse. Uh, let's do another trial here. So let's say minus sixteen. Minus 16 and minus 16. Okay, and I I run the code. Okay, this this looks. Uh, so let's compare figure one and three now. Uh, okay, so well here I have a reasonably good settling time of, of, of about say five seconds or even less. Uh, my overshoot has drastically decreased. Okay, uh, and of course. Uh, these are this is a nice things right, that I have a lesser overshoot and a faster settling time is always uh, desired in any any control design. Okay, so one observation from here is uh, the following, right? So whenever uh, the poles, uh, so when whenever, so okay, in that example we had three poles, but say whenever the poles were close to the open loop poles, then we had. Uh, uh, like a much larger overshoot. Okay, so let me just just draw a little little diagram here, right? And say, well, I just denote. Okay, these are my controller pole poles with the with the blue line, and say these are my uh, observer poles. Let's say they are somewhere here, right? Or or okay, as uh, both of them were real, so let's say they are somewhere here. Okay, in this case, we will have a. a a larger overshoot, okay, and on the other hand, when the poles were here, well, the, the these things don't change, right? Because these come from the requirements of, uh, of or, or this come from the design specifications. So in this case, you have a lesser overshoot and also a, a, a smaller settling time. Okay, so so. Uh, well, it's also kind of kind of obvious, right? That your observer dynamics should converge faster than the controller dynamics, or than the, the uh, than the controller dynamics. So here, when I say controller dynamics, I essentially say the dynamics of a minus b k. Okay, so this is kind of okay because what what uh, the controller or what the observer based controller does is it just first computes the estimate state and then it has to feed it back to 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 the plant and therefore we would expect the observer to have a faster response than the than the uh, controller uh, itself, right? And therefore, uh, so one thing is to choose the observers. Uh, poles to be much further away from the desired po poles of the closed loop plant. Okay, so that's 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 about uh, about a little little example illustration of observer design. You could do a, a a bunch of examples. You can actually construct your own examples. So lots of people uh, over the forum post uh, messages that oh please do more examples. I think we can construct examples. So there are lots of examples which you which can be found online you can just work those out uh, for yourself and they are they are pretty straightforward right you know so just you can just 
check for different values and just check for performance of the controller and your observer simultaneously. Uh, in the uh, observer design so far, what we saw was that we reconstructed all the state variables. Okay? So, in some cases, some state variables might be available for direct or even accurate measurement and therefore, one can avoid estimating those states. Right? So, whatever is, is available for measurement, we can just directly measure those and feedback and whatever are not available for measurement, we can possibly construct an observer. So, in general, uh, your state is an n-dimensional vector and output is say some p uh, which is uh, uh, typically less than n-dimensional vector. So, and when I say y equal to c x and say x is in R n, y is in R p, uh, then uh, this p outputs are usually linear combination of state variables. Okay? and this need not be computed. So, what we need to estimate is only the remaining n minus p state variables. Okay? So, when we need to estimate only the remaining n minus p variables, now this is called a minimum or a reduced order observer. So, let us see how, how, how this works. Okay? So, let us for simplicity say that p variables are of the form uh, or the p outputs are of the form y 1 equal to x 1 till y p is, is x p. Okay. And the remaining ones are the ones which I which I need to estimate. I do not know what is how does x p plus 1 look like till uh, x n, right? but I know how x 1 till x p looks like. Right? So, I am just, just making a very nice assumption here that, that this, this holds. In general, what we said that uh, they might be linear uh, combinations of state variables, but here I just make a, a much, much, much more stronger assumption just for ease of uh, computation. Okay. So, now I can I can split my uh, variables or, or my state equations into, into the following form. So, I have uh, x 1 dot and, and x 2 dot in, in this way. So, these are uh, the first p variables, these are n minus p okay? and I split my a matrices, the b matrices accordingly and my output now looks something like this. I will just call this z as the, the p dimensional identity matrix times x 1 and 0 and this is just rewriting y equal to c x in a, in, a, in a different way here. Okay. Now, these are all measured right? because z is simply x 1 right? and both are of, of dimension p. Okay. Now, let us look at how the system whose states need to be measured look like. So, these are the states right, which need to be measured. So, I have x 2 dot is uh, a 2 2 x 2, a 2 1 x 1 and b 2 times u. And okay, Now, what is this? This is uh, I know x 1 right, because I can directly measure this. Okay, I know u of course, I know a 2 1 and I know b 2. So, let I will just call, uh, so this is the system x 2 dot is a 2 2 x 2 plus b bar u bar where this is b bar and this is uh, the, uh, the u bar. right? So, this is a system whose states need to be need to be estimated. Okay. Now, similarly, I will define an, a new output in the following form that y bar is from the first equation. How does first equation look like? First equation is uh, x 1 dot is a 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 x 2 plus b 1 u. So, from this I can I can write something like this here. So, where uh, the new output y bar is a new C matrix which is a 1 2 times x 2. So, these are the states that need to be to be measured okay? and this this uh, this a 1 2 x 2 from this expression takes, takes this form. Okay. Now, we construct for, a, for an estimator for this system which whose states are x 2 and output is this y bar okay. and I use the standard standard formula which I used over here to construct. Right? How did I construct the state uh, observer here is just with uh, this equation. I okay. will use exactly the same thing here to construct a state uh, to construct uh, an observer for those unestimated states uh, in, in the following way. Right. Uh, okay. I'll just skip those computations. They are like fairly, fairly easy to check. Uh, the error e 
takes uh, the following form in terms of A22 and A12, that is exactly what I wanted to estimate, right. So, so it is even over here in this system, right. This x, x2 dot equal to A22 plus B bar U bar is the system that needs to needed to be estimated, okay. Now, what do I know is that, okay, uh, when the error should converge to 0, this A22 minus uh, uh, A22 minus L bar A12 should be a stability matrix with some eigenvalues or with eigenvalues at the desired locations, right. So, uh, if it is a stability matrix, then I know that the error converges to 0. So, when, when can I do this? When can I place poles of A22 minus L bar A12 at, at desired locations. This I can do if and only if the pair A22, comma A12 is observable. Okay. So, very similar to what, what were the conditions here, right? What was the necessary condition for uh, A A minus L C to be a stability matrix was that A this pair A and C must be uh, detectable or, or observable in our case, right? Or, or uh, when uh, the pair A C is observable, then I can place uh, all the eigenvalues of A minus L C at these desired locations, right? Similarly, if I were to place the poles of A22 minus L bar A12, this is observable, okay? Now, who guarantees this? Well, we know that the pair A C is observable and this guarantees that this pair A22, A12 is observable, okay. You may just want to write down the proof uh, of it uh, quickly uh, for, for yourself, right. I mean, I will skip that. These are, so we have done lots of, lots of proofs on how to compute controllability or, or observability via the duality, the eigenvector test and so on. So, you can just make use of, of one of those tests to show that uh, the, the pair A, C being controllable is enough for me to guarantee that the pair A22, comma A12 is uh, is, is observable, okay. So, so A C being observable is equivalent to saying A 22 A 12 is, is also observable, okay. So, so then therefore, I can assign eigenvalues to A 22 minus L bar A 12, right, okay. So, so one drawback here is that uh, I was estimating X 2 dot and this X 2 dot had an expression Y bar and Y bar contained derivative of X 1. Right. So, x 1 was, so what was x 1? x 1 came from here, right. So, so z was equal to x 1 and it, so the, the uh, x 2 dot needed computation of, of x 1 dot, okay. Now, this is undesirable undesir especially if x 1 is noisy. So, if, if even though I can measure even though those states are available for measurement, but there could be lots of sensor noise for example, right. And derivative of noise is, is not a desirable thing. De differentiation of that signal actually amplifies the noise, okay. So, how do we get rid of that? Okay, so to avoid that, uh, we uh, eliminate x1 dot from the design procedure and define a new variable w as x2 bar minus l bar times times z, okay. So, this, uh, this kind of uh, works out uh, pretty neat. Uh, that I can write down uh, my expressions or in terms of, not in terms of x2 dot, but in terms of w dot, okay. So, uh, I can, uh, so quickly compute what is uh, w dot is x2 hat dot minus l z dot, okay. Now, I know what is x2 dot from here, I know what is z dot from here and I can simplify this equation to, to look uh, to look something like this, okay. Again, this is just uh, uh, not even a laborious process, but just a, a couple of steps you can you can write this down and and you can arrive uh, at this uh, particular expression, okay. So, W is an estimate of uh, x 2 bar minus L bar times z and therefore, okay. So, I know W. So, what is x 2? Well, x2 bar is now simply w plus l bar times z. So this is what I estimated. Now I know this, right? So this is known. This no, this comes from the computation of the of the observer pools. This is also known. This comes some from the measurements. 
So, this z are uh, available directly for measurement. Okay. So, so, so that is uh, that's, that's kind of uh, kind of pretty pretty neat because uh, we do not have to uh, now go through the, the procedure of computing what is uh, x dot. Okay. So, again coming back to the block diagram uh, of it. Uh, so, again I have uh, x dot is a x uh, plus plus uh, b u. Okay, so, let me uh, write down a few steps here just so that it is easy for us to understand how the how the block diagram actually looks like. Okay, so, uh, again so u comes as a result of minus k x hat. Uh, okay, so, what is uh, uh, x hat? Uh, so, uh, first is I estimate w. Okay, and then uh, once I estimate w, uh, x 2 hat is constructed as w plus l bar of z. So, here right. So, uh, x bar x bar is comes as a result of, of uh, these two singulars. So, my y was initially of the form some p dimensional identity and x 1 and x 2. Okay. Now, the estimated state is has two components. This is already measured directly and I have x 2 hat. Okay. What was x 1? x 1 was simply y and this x 2 hat was to be estimated. Okay. So, this I can write equivalently as uh, 0 identity n minus p times x 2 hat minus l bar y this l bar I know how to compute right from the from the observer uh, design plus I have a identity here a l bar and a y. Okay, so, you just, uh, just rewrite this and you will realize get this uh, back. Okay, so, this x hat now can be written as I uh, will call this as some c hat times. Uh, so, wh what was uh, this signal? Right. Okay. Y was uh, it was also equal to z uh, from from this expression. Right. So this was my original y. Y equal to c x. I call that as z. So this uh, turns out to be c hat times w plus. Let me call this some d hat times y. So that's exactly what is happening. Right. C hat times w, d hat times y gives me x hat, and this y a minus k goes back to my to my controller, and I can equivalently de derive. Uh, the the transfer function and so on and similarly you could also verify the uh, the uh, notation for or the uh, the expression for w right so w dot is a 2 2 minus a 1 2 w and 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 so on okay so we could just just uh, uh, check check for this uh, also and this b hat and f hat are are just uh, these two terms here right so, uh, the term associated with y I call this entire thing as uh, b hat and this as f hat and you can have the, uh, the nice looking uh, block diagram uh, realization like this. Okay. So, this is just, just as a, a nice pictorial interpretation of what uh, of designing the, the reduced order observer. Okay, so, uh, what was the assumption here was that C was uh, kind of had, had a beautiful expression like this C was the p times identity and then 0. Okay, what if C is not in, in this form then we know a bunch of tricks right. We know how to transform C into a form which looks like that. So, what if the output matrix is not of the form i p and 0 well, uh, well we know what is the rank of C right rank of C is p uh, and therefore, we use the standard trick of coordinate transformation that uh, let x equal to p x bar be a be a transformation with p given by c and then c tilde and this c tilde is chosen such that p is full rank that as, as in, this, in the same way as we did for the observer decomposition or the even 
in the dual way the controllable decomposition. Okay. Now, given this system, I can write it, write it into a system uh, in a transformed form where uh, in the new coordinates x bar, my c bar takes the this form i p and 0. Okay. Now, I, de I do the design here uh, because I know a nice looking formulas here and I just uh, use the reverse coordinate transformation that x uh, equal to p x bar to get uh, see how how the observer looks like in the original coordinates right like what we do even for the uh, for the controller design right you just uh, get it into the controllable canonical form you design the k and then use the transformation p to get back to the uh, to the original system okay now uh, okay let's do a, do a little little example okay so uh, Again, I start with x dot is a x plus b times u with a 0, minus 2, 1, minus 2, b is 0, 1, c is 0 and 1, which means I can, I can actually measure x 2 directly and I need to find what is an estimate of x 1 hat. Right. So, okay. So, uh, what is the reduce order uh, observer here? So, we need to design an observer of order one, right? Because here n equal to two, uh, p equal to one. Okay. Okay, now, how do we do this? Uh, first is, is C in the form i p and 0? Well, the answer is no, but I therefore, I would use a transformation p c c bar that was the notation we had used here earlier c c tilde such that okay, what is C? C is 0 1 and C tilde is 1 0 such that p has now has a, has a full rank. Okay, now, I use the standard transformation x bar sorry x bar equal to p x and design uh, an, uh, a reduce order observer for the system in x bar. Okay. So, uh, in this, so my new a will be of the form uh, okay here i use x equal to px bar but okay this x equal to px bar um, so if i use uh, the transformation it will just simply change to uh, you can also use uh, x bar equal to px right nothing really changes just that instead of pap inverse it will be p inverse ap so uh, with just a transformation, I will have my new A matrix A bar as minus 2, 1, minus 2, 0, B bar is 1, 0 and not surprisingly C bar will now have the form which I want right 1 and 0 yeah, like this. Okay. Now, once I, once I have this, uh, I just uh, use the expression to design the observer which is this one. Okay, I just substitute all the values and what I get is w dot is minus l bar w plus This will be plus. Okay, just substituting uh, value, right? So this is now we have an observer of order one. Okay, I'm just rushing through these steps, but we could just substitute each of these values and, ch and check. This should should be pretty pretty straightforward, right? Okay, now let's say I just arbitrarily choose uh, this to be minus ten. And therefore, I have uh, w dot is 10 times w minus 122y plus 10 times u. Okay, and w plus 
this bar of y this is also was w sorry plus l bar of z. Now, what is this? This is simply w minus 10 y. Okay. This is an estimate for x 2 hat and therefore, y w minus 10 times y is an estimate of x bar. Okay, so, this all, all I am in the in the new coordinate set right? this should be x x 2 bar hat and therefore, the ex, uh, the original estimate x will simply uh, be uh, p inverse of y w minus 10 y. This will simply turn out to be w minus 10 y and y. Okay. So, so uh, again, nothing much happening here. The first step I do is to convert C uh, the system into a form where the C matrix looks like this. Uh, the next step would be to follow these these steps here. Okay. Uh, and then uh, what happens here is that this W plus L2 times Z is an estimate of, of X2 bar because W is an estimate of, of this thing. Okay, uh, so that, that's that's pretty pretty uh, straightforward, right? And then I can go back to the original uh, transformation to to see what how it looks like in the uh, in the original coordinates. Okay, so uh, just uh, as pre so I, I'll rerun the previous example uh, with uh, a reduced order observer. So I have a third order system. Again, a is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2 minus one. Uh, C is one zero zero. Well, I just for simplicity, I just choose it to be in a, in a way that, that suits me. Okay. And then uh, now, uh, I, use, I have the, uh, the desired poles of the closed loop system similarly as what I had earlier, uh, just that I am, I am now designing a reduced order observer. So, the observer here will be of order 2 which is of 3 earlier. Uh, so, it will just be minus 8, minus 8 instead of minus 8, minus 8, minus 8. Okay, then I just do the, say, uh, the same thing for uh, uh, k to find the the, uh, the controller gain that will be the same uh, and then now I design a reduce observer based on the states which look uh, like this. right? So, I have to now uh, design okay, sorry design an observer for or, or in other words I can also say that I want to deserve, design a full state observer for a system which looks like this in x2 right? and a certain output here. right? So, uh, designing a reduced order observer for, for this system turns out to be designing a, a full order observer for, for this uh, system over here. Okay? And then I just write down the, uh, the, uh, the equations uh, in, in, in that form. right? So, I just partition A into its appropriate matrices and so on and design uh, an uh, observer for this a 2 2 minus a, this pair a 2 2 a 1 2 and this we know was was uh, observable right and i just okay uh, just run 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 the code uh, uh, for so so the ob observer is designed for this pair a 2 2 and a 1 2 with the poles being at minus 8 minus 8 and the rest of the process uh, remains the same i will upload the code and you can just play around with this and again uh, uh, the closed loop transfer function would look uh, would look something like this you can also look at uh, changing the poles for example to uh, say minus 2 and say minus 3 and check how the the performance changes you can see how different locations of the observer poles affect the uh, closed loop uh, transfer or the or the closed loop uh, step response of the system Okay, so uh, so I'll 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 just leave it uh, to you to to uh, uh, to run a little more codes and and check for yourself. Okay, so uh, so this this kind of concludes uh, the lecture on observer and so simultaneous controller observer design and also the reduce order observer. And what is important here is to decide where to place the observers. And one takeaway from those uh, little graphs we plotted was that the observer dynamics uh, must be faster or the error, error must converge to 0 faster 
than the uh, than than the than the controller dynamics, right? So the observer pole should be further to the left than the than the uh, desired poles of the of the closed loop uh, plant system. Okay, so so that's what we had today, right? So so in module 11, we will start with some basics of uh, optimal control and then end up with what is uh, the famous uh, Riccati equation. Okay, thanks for listening.